Bomber the El Arian, but let's also get you the final update on our global market wrap this morning. European markets ended Monday's trading session higher, so the French CAC index was up over 60 points at the close. The DAX surged over a percent, and the British FTSE index saw a gain of 66 points. And the European banking sector recovered, with Deutsche Bank surging over 6 percent. Remember, we were telling you earlier that on Friday, the German lenders sank after, you know, credit default swap jumped higher. So we'd seen an 8 percent cut on Friday, and now yesterday we saw a bit of a recovery come through so six percent recovered on Deutsche Bank that's everything that we're tracking globally but let's now talk about all of the individual cues that really impact our own markets and everything that you should watch ahead of our trading session today we have Ekta Mangalam and Surbi joining in with the trade setup and all of the individual names that could really be in uh, you know in focus today guys a very good morning to all of you Ekta let me come to you first you know after trading in a band for much of the day we did see a pretty flat close how's it looking this morning Thanks for that. Well, uh, you know, yesterday the markets did close in the green. Yes, the markets did give up gains towards the last 30 minutes of trade. But it seems as though the markets did shrug off the concerns over more of the default swaps in the US and the European banks. We saw that through the trading session in yesterday's trade. FII sold less than they have, uh, at least in the previous session. So they sold around 890 odd crores in yesterday's trade. And DII's net bought close to around uh, 2000 odd crores, 1800 odd crores to be precise. Now the sentiment it seems has improved or continues to improve around what could be a possible banking crisis which could now be controlled by the regulators. So for example we had a close which were where we, in the US where the Dow closed nearly 200 points higher. Largely it was a mixed close but the Dow rallied. We have Asia higher as investors fears on the bank turmoil seems to be easing so it's largely higher in this morning's trade and gold has slipped which indicates that there is a risk of sentiment taking place and oil has risen. So all this seems to be boding well for our markets. Let's see whether we manage to build on gains from yesterday's trading session and whether or not there is any kind of profit booking at higher levels. Now, in terms of a couple of things to watch for, broader markets which underperformed in yesterday's trading session, follow on buying in probably the pharmaceutical and healthcare space. The Nifty Bank, which closed flat after trading in a range of more than 400 odd points, so maybe some amount of stability and buying there. Remember, it's overall a holiday shortened week. We have March expiry on Wednesday. So all of these, uh, all of these uh, factors will come into play in today's trading session. Lastly, just keep your eye out on what's happening with regards to the COVID-19 cases on the fringe. That could be something that one needs to monitor. All right, Ekta, thanks a lot for laying out all of those cues for us. We are going to track everything that you just pointed out. But let's also talk about the individual names because there was quite a bit of stock-specific news that also came post-market close yesterday. So Surbi is here with that entire list. Surbi? Hi, good morning. The first one up on my radar is Aditya Billa Capital. The company is going to divest its entire stake in Aditya Billa Insurance broking for an enterprise value of 455 crores. Next is Phoenix Mills, where the Canadian uh, pension plan is going to invest a second tranche of investment worth 160 crores in the subsidiary Plutocrat Commercial Real Estate Private Limited. The first tranche of 790 crores was completed in November of 2021. Next is Adani Power, where the Supreme Court dismisses Customs Department's appeal against Adani Power Maharashtra. SJVN, the company secures green financing worth 915 crores from Japan Bank for International Cooperation. PNC Infratech, the company emerges as the lowest bidder for a project worth 820 crores. And lastly, the Buildcon, the company emerges as the lowest bidder for an NHAI project worth 780 crores. All right, those are some individual stocks that you should have on your radar today. Surbhi, thanks a lot for filling us in with that list. Finally, it's over to Mangalam, who's looking at all of the cues from the futures and options space. Mangalam, looks like the start will be positive, but take us for everything we should track. Yes, the start will be positive, as the SGX Nifty indicates. But if you just take a look at the way the markets moved yesterday, towards the latter half of trade, we did get a bit of a you know, dip from the highs on the Nifty. But uh, all said and done, the Nifty was actually outperforming the Nifty Bank, and that's what data suggested as well. The FIs, at the end of the day, bought about 3,200 crores in index futures, and most of that money was, uh, you know, uh, directed towards the Nifty as against the Nifty Bank, where it saw only 800 crores worth buying, whereas the Nifty saw 2,500 crores worth buying. If you just take a look at what they did in index futures, they covered 31,000 short contracts because now 
a firm support at the lower level has been established between 16,900 and 17,000. As a result of which, the FII longs jumped to 17% from 13%. And that's good news for all those who are seeking some sort of support. In index options as well, one day ahead of expiry, FII has bought more calls than puts, uh, hoping for a bit of an upside. However, as far as option writing is concerned, they wrote both calls as well as puts at an equal level. And in fact, at the equal strike as well, 17,000 now remains the fulcrum of the market. If you just take a look at the action in the 17,000 put as well as the 17,000 call, both of them together have a premium of 150 odd rupees. So those who are writing this, uh, you know, 17,000 straddle, which is a call and a put put together, are hoping for a range of 16,850 on the lower, li uh, lower level and 17,150 at the higher level. And that's pretty much, you know, the range where the market meandered around yesterday as well. Yesterday's high was closer to 17,100 and low was closer to 16,900. For the Nifty Bank, important to cross the 200-day moving average where it is facing some sort of resistance as yesterday's high would indicate. But towards the last hour, I will also watch out for the mid-cap index because it's the first time that the mid-cap index uh, has its weekly options expiry today on Wednesday. All right, we will watch for that. Mangalam, thanks a lot for running us through all of those cues. But with that, we do need to get into a short break on the show. But on the other side, we're going to take you through the latest on the COVID-19 situation in India as active cases surge above 10,000. Stay tuned for all of the details. Welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. And an important story, Reliance Capital lenders have decided to go ahead with the second round of auction on the 4th of April and have now set the base bid for round two at 9,500 crore rupees. So Ritu Singh is here with all of the details on this one. Ritu? That's right. We've been given to understand that the lenders of Reliance Capital have decided to proceed with a second round of auctions for the company on the 4th of April. And this time around, the base bid has been set far higher at 9,500 crores in net present value terms, with the condition that there will have to be a minimum cash payment up front of 8,000 crores from the suitor. Uh, now, compared to this, the liquidation value of the company is still higher. It is pegged at 12,500 crores, so lenders are hopeful uh, that the bids will cross the this amount. However, it remains unclear if the suitors for Reliance Capital will come forward to participate in the second round because remember we've been reporting uh, Hinduja has already expressed concerns. It has said uh, that it wants to retain its earlier offer of 8,110 crores and not the revised offer of 9,000 crores. Torrent has challenged the process, the legality of the second round of auction uh, and the matter is still in Supreme Court. Uh, it was the highest bidder in the first round with an offer of 8,640 crores but it remains means unclear if it will come forward now in the second round. Uh, the Supreme Court's decision is also pending and the next hearing is only in the month of August. So a lot of uncertainty still looms. The other two suitors, Okri and Pirimal Kosmia, are also unlikely to participate. So it's a question mark at this point of time. But nonetheless, uh, lenders have decided to go ahead with the second round on the 4th of April. All right, a second round of bidding on the 4th of April. Ritu, thanks a lot for bringing us all of the details on this story. But moving on now, let me also bring you an update on the COVID situation across the country because cases are on the rise once again with over 10,000 active cases as of yesterday. This is as per data from the Health Ministry. The centre has now asked states to ensure preparedness for the management of the virus. States have been directed to strengthen surveillance with a focus on genome sequencing of positive samples and increased testing with RT-PCR tests. States have also been advised to conduct mock drills and stock up on hospital infrastructure to ensure preparedness in case of a surge in cases. So that's where the situation stands as of now on the COVID situation across India as well as the preparedness. But with that, we do need to get into a short break on the show. On the other side, we're going to talk all about commodities. There's been a near 5% rally in crude oil prices. We'll bring you the details in just a bit. 